I just received the latest two cartridges for the Evercade VS or handheld, the Gremlin Collection and the Renovations Products Collection 1. We're going to set aside the Gremlin Collection, take a look at that in another video today. I just wanted to focus on the Renovations 1. I did receive these early for purpose of review from Evercade, as I do like the product that they sell. I've already pre-ordered these and paid them off, so I'm going to have extra copies. I will be giving those away in the very near future during a live stream. I'm live streaming the, the VS. A lot of people have been asking me to, to do that again, so I'll give away those extra copies that I should be receiving later on this month when they release. But yeah, we're going to focus on the Renovations Collection cartridge. Now, this cartridge, just like all the other ones, comes with a nice full-color manual, and this collection does have 12 games. And in that manual, I really dig the way they have these things set up, going over a little bit of the history of the company, talking about the games, all that good stuff. Really miss manuals, so I love that they've uh, included that with this stuff. So with the Renovations Collection, we got 12 games included. And either some are going to tickle it for you, some may not. Maybe all of them will. Maybe none of them will. I, I don't know. I mean, it's a subjective thing when it comes to you know, the games that you like, but with these 12 games on this cart, we have a, a little bit of a, an interesting mix. We got some action platformers, some action RPGs, some horizontal shoot 'em ups a wrestling game, and a pinball game. Very interesting, very interesting collection here. So, like I said, these are for the VS or the handheld. The game can be played on either, or today we're going to be looking at it being played through the VS. So, Popping it in, you get that list of games. And with the list of games, like I said, we have 12 of them. We got Beast Wrestler, which is a wrestling game. And with that one, it's got monsters, right? So it's kind of like King of the Monsters for the Neo Geo. Like that's kind of the impression I got, but not really. Uh, this one might find some play for those who are curious. But for me, I just, I found the game really slow. It had like bad hit detection, really wasn't much fun for me. Um, the design of the beasts was pretty cool though, but just some of the, the moves and I don't know, I just didn't really care for this one as much as I'd hoped when I initially seen it. A lot of the games on this collection I've played before, but there's a handful of them that I didn't and this is one of them that I never played. So I was really curious to check it out and this one for me is kind of a pass, like I said, very subjective here, man. Next one on the list is uh, Arcus Odyssey. So this is an action RPG, and you have multiple characters you could play as. Each character has different attacks and abilities. It's most mostly action-based, you know, attacking enemies and bosses. Uh, but there's a little bit of puzzle solving here and there. Nothing outrageous. I mean, I did find the game pretty fun. The soundtrack was really cool. It's an action RPG. I mean, take it or leave it, right? Next up. Dino Land. So this one's a dinosaur pinball themed game. I played this one a long time ago and playing it again, it's pretty fun. Uh, I thought it's okay. I mean, I like the sprites in the game. There's a lot going on in the, the play areas. If you like pinball uh, and you like retro gaming, you know, I, I could recommend this one to mix things up. I mean, with this cartridge, there's the variety's a little, like I said, it's a little, a little weird, um, but there, there's some stuff here that you could kind of break it up. You know, some of these games are going to have a lot of gameplay. Some of them are going to be a little shorter type of thing. Um, Dino Land was, was interesting. It was interesting. The next one is uh, El Viento. Uh, and this one's an action platformer. Kind of similar to a couple other games on this list. Um, and I've seen this game have uh, mixed reviews in, in, in the past. Um, but, you know, I, I do like it. Uh, but I, I also noticed how questionable some of the design choices were uh, with how the game played. Like, can't get, get a little weird, but overall, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, not the best action game in the world, but, you know, some fun to be had for sure. Next up is uh, Exile. This one's another action RPG, uh, and it's kind of bland in my opinion. Uh, you walk around in a typical RPG style, uh, you know, in towns and areas, talking to NPCs, you know, Oh, you know, over the head type of thing, that, that, that perspective. And then when you go to a dungeon, it turns into like a side scrolling action game. Like there's nothing particularly bad uh, with the game besides like a few nitpicks, but it's just nothing to jump up for joy over in my opinion. Hey, I mean, maybe some people are really big fans of this game. 
I really couldn't get into it, but you know, it is what it is. The next one, one of the uh, the more interesting titles here, I mean, they're all kind of interesting, but Final Zone, it's an isometric mech action game. So each stage you have certain targets you have to destroy, and then after you get all those targets you know, destroyed, then you fight a boss. And I think like this one was pretty fun. I really enjoyed this one. The stages, they're decent size, but like as you start wandering around looking for the enemies you're supposed to kill, because it's very specific, like you'll have a tally of how many enemies you're supposed to kill, but it's gonna be certain enemies. You have to kill a certain amount of each. So you may have to wander around to look for some of the enemies, and it starts seeming like, holy crap, this stage is huge. And I think the stages are not necessarily huge, but they're decent size but it kind of gives that, that feeling that they're bigger than they actually are because in reality, the stages wrap around after you walk through a few areas. So it's kind of one of those things. Now, the control and movement of the, the mech that you play as takes a bit to get used to, but I, I found it fairly enjoyable. This is my style of game, so I, I dug this one. Next one, which is one of the, uh, the, the heaviest hitters on this cartridge, in my opinion, is Gaiaris. Gaiaris. Guy. Are us. <laughs> Toys R Us. I miss Toys R Us. Gaieris, a horizontal shooter. Um, and, you know, it was one of the main reasons I was looking forward to this cartridge. So this game is, is hard. It's a tough one, man. It's one of the hardest shooters of its time. But it has a lot of cool stuff going for it, like the system of stealing enemy weapons and the variety and the stages and the movement and whatnot. It's a really fun one. And a lot of people I know would love to have this, you know, in their Evercade collection, maybe specifically just for this game. So here's your chance, $20 for these cartridges. I mean, I know some people are not into the Evercade and that's fine, but if you are, hey, I mean, price is reasonable in my opinion for what you're getting here. Um, next up, Granada. So this is an action shooter where you play as a tank destroying a set number of targets in each stage, kind of like Final Zone, um, but but different, it's different. Now, I, I really like this one. It's actually one of my favorites on the, the cartridge. It kind of feels like a sci-fi gauntlet. It, it really does. The control takes a little getting used to, but I mean, that could be said for any game, I guess. Um, you shoot in whichever direction you're traveling. So if you're moving you know, to the right, that's where you're shooting, but you could lock the gun's position by holding a button that way if you have hordes of enemies coming at you and you're trying to you know back away from them you don't start shooting in the opposite direction so you know you do have that button you can hold to lock the position of the gun and i, I really dug this one it, it was pretty cool you have a a map to show you where the enemies are at because you could kind of get lost looking for them but you do have that radar going so pretty cool next up on the list is uh soldis it's a horizontal shooter uh, the game looks pretty good, plays well. Not as difficult as Gaiaris. Uh, so maybe some will want to start with this game first. I really enjoyed it. I mean, you have your typical power-ups, but uh, you have different arms on your ship that you get different weapons for and can also maneuver their positions while moving and not firing. So there's, you know, it's got a little uniqueness to it. A very smooth uh, horizontal shooter game. I, I dug it. One of my favorites here. Next up um, is Trasia. And it's an RPG. And this one, uh, I, I mean, I'm just being honest with you. I didn't give it a chance. Like I started playing it and the, the movement was jerky and just, I had a lot of things I just didn't like about it. And I, I really just couldn't get into it. Like this isn't really like a review of each game. It's just kind of my impressions type of thing. And this Trasia game, I, I just, I blew past it. I played it for a minute and couldn't, couldn't deal with it. So sorry, you know, you're a big Trasia fan. I didn't mean to uh, to offend you there. Now, next up and final, the final two games is Valis. We have uh, Valis 1 and 3. So these are action platformers, and either you're going to love them or hate them. Uh, it's not a, a bad game, either one of them. But, you know, the first game in particular, Valis 1, it, it is fairly sluggish. Um, the third one, Valis 3, uh, it's, it's a bit more refined, but it's still a slow game. And, and when I say slow or sluggish, I don't mean like the game chugs along, like nothing like that, or it's laggy. It's just the character you play as moves slow as heck. I wish there was a run button in the game and you could just kind of run through enemies and whatnot. Um, but it, it's it's just kind of a slower paced game. It's interesting, you got cutscenes and whatnot, and 
uh, it's a decent looking game for its time. A lot of a lot of fans out there of this franchise, and it's really cool to see these two games on this collection. I like them, but there you go. That's the uh, Renovations Collection one and the twelve games. Just want to kind of give you guys a a little look at everything here. So really do appreciate every single one of y'all. Thanks for hanging. I will catch you on the next one. Bye.